Alright, let's give this another shot. Let's try again. From the top. Who is this? Eva Japan? 2018? DJ? Kita Senju? Versus Don Hiru? I don't know. Oh, it's Dunhill. I do recognize that name. I just never see it written like that. DJ sucks. So I've already seen like the first match against this Sakura. Because we tried to watch it earlier and then I had to leave. Sakura is pretty much the same in this game. Stand short goes pretty far. Crouch run house and stand run house go pretty far. Everything else is W as hell. But her Tatsus are faster and safer. Hi. Round two of me attempting to watch this video. Not a punish. Sakura has like nothing unsafe except uh, DP. What was I talking about the first time? Kisa Sanju is like one of the best players who didn't leave the game. So now he's just like one of the best players. Refreshing. Space sweep. Might have been safe at that range. No combo. Kind of hit close forward. He can get far forward at the very least. He had charge in that context. So he could have gotten close forward, far forward into like a Sobat or something. Or at the very least. Look at that. I remember that. Last time we watched it. He tried to get out of the way so that she couldn't have ADC. Because if she could have ADC, she could make it safe. But he probably should have jumped over her rather than trying to jump back. Sakura's got a lot of recovery on her DP. Like some of the most in the whole game. Next range combo. <laughs> the little fake jump. That might have been an OS. He might have like tried to time that to like hit, but then missed the safe jump time and just always buffer a grab. It's a good little fake out, but there's a consistent tech timing that'll always beat it. And you don't even take any risks because the opponent has to go into landing recovery and it's not like DJ can just empty jump at DX up kicks. Can't get charge in time. DJ can't do anything throw invincible as soon as he lands. And the throw will come out faster than anything he does. Ooh. That's a pretty tight link, I think. I think that's either one frame or two. Although I think it depends on... Oh, no! Tatsu would have chipped out. Chip outs in this game. Please note that it's an ultra double DJ. DJ has one of the hardest times of any character landing an ultra. And ultra double gives him the ability to pick and choose either opportunity, which happens to come up. So maybe he can punish a fireball. Maybe he can um, juggle after an EX up punch. The problem with DJ is his, his mix up to land EX up punch basically doesn't exist. It's not the same as a Shoryu. There's a lot of ways you can land a Shoryu, you know? You can land a Shoryu anti air and then FADC ultra. You can like land a Shoryu as like a, a throw, like mix up. You can do a Shoryu can instead of a throw and the Shoryu can so invincible. You can use that to land ultra. DJ doesn't really have a way of using his EX uh, EX up punch except like if the opponent does something unsafe or if he confirms it and the confirms are kind of specific it's like one jab until they're strong at the EX up punch or two jabs Geef Silver Scrub I want to take up Birdie most important buttons to start out with um, Stand Roundhouse is a very very good meaty if you have an opportunity to get it up it's plus frames and leads to very very high damage combos and it's a mix up with this throw um Regular throws are a lot better now, now that they nerfed his command grab, but command grab is still good too. Um, learn when not to do EX Polar Avenger, and by that I mean use EX Polar Avenger a lot, and figure out when people tend to fall into it and when they don't. If you don't do a move a lot, you won't actually um, learn when not to do it. Always start by spamming everything, and then scale back. Never start by not using things and add them. Well, it depends. Depends on the thing. You have to run. You have to walk before you can run too. Um, ooh, that was cool. I made a video about that, but I was worried that it was too specific. But now I've seen it. People landing on fireballs. You have juggles. I literally made a video that was like landing on fireballs. And I was like, I don't know. Will the opponent ever actually land on a fireball wearing DJ juggles with the X Sobot? That was like five years ago. And by five, I mean like three. Good memory. He absolutely, absolutely, absolutely could have done dash in. Oh, what was he? Which way did he dash? 
He's a backdash, right? Yeah. So he could have just juggled Ultra, I think. Just charged a little bit more and then juggled Ultra. He also could have done dash in into EX legs into Ultra. Um, looks strong. Consistent A tier. Having consistent A tier is very important. Especially in like silver and below. Um where it can literally just win you games. Uh let me think. Crutch Dab is pretty good. It's basically like uh, Zangiefs at this point, now that they've nerfed Zangiefs. It's a really, really, really big jab that's good at interrupting stuff, but not a whole lot of combo potential. Um, Stint Jab and Stint Short. Stint Short is like his best light, probably. Four frame startup, so it's pretty fast. Plus four, so you can combo it to another one, and then you can combo like a Light Ball Head or an EX Ball Head from that. Um, if you're just poking, stay strong, stay medium punch. If you're just trying to play neutral, that's like one of the better neutral buttons. Stay medium kick's pretty good too. But stay medium punch is really good because you can just do it. You can just throw it out and then cancel it into medium bullhead at ranges where it won't work or like it won't hit. And then if you counter poke something, you could you get the cancel automatically. But if you don't counter poke something, then it doesn't come out. So you just get the whiff stand strong, which is not too risky. Stuff like that. Brady has good uh, empty cancels, which most grab plays don't. Nor does. Mika does with bar. Mika doesn't really have a whole lot to empty cancel. Well, those are his really important buttons. Cute combo. Brady's fun. I played Brady for a little while when the game right came out. I played him a lot during the beta. He was like my main in the beta. If I w if they removed every DLC character, my main would probably be Birdie. He's like a character where you can play extremely passive, and I like those kinds of characters. Whoa! He could have won the air to air for free, but he did the low short. I mean the air. Nice. He did the air, like down short, which killed his jump arc, and then Chen Li didn't hit a button either. They both could have killed each other very easily in that, but they never interacted. Ooh, counter poke. Remember when you could counter poke stuff? The sweep was too early. DJ's mix up there isn't very solid. It's just the regular ass frame trap mix up, but because of crouch techs and because of um I don't know if the throw tech window is actually longer. Because of crouch techs and because of the I don't know, various factors. It's easier to dodge the frame trap mix up in this game. Backdashes, I guess, are one of the things. There's like several. I feel like there's more to it than just that, but I don't know what the missing thing is. I think EX legs is minus two. That looked like he did it like a punish and Chun Li didn't block, but maybe it didn't hit properly. It could be that EX legs is supposed to hit twice and it only hit once there, so she had extra recovery. So I expect that's just pretty good. You might call it the third best in the game. Pretty sure. It's like Poison, Rose, Chun Li, not in that order. It's like Rose is the best, and then probably Chun Li and then Poison. I don't know, there's a lot of good backdashes in this game, but those ones jump out at me. Those are three of the best. Evil Rear has quite a far backdash, which can be good or bad, but it's got a lot of invincibility. Traded. Yeah, low profiles beat like everything DJ can do on Wake Up. DJ's a joke. A media low profile will literally destroy DJ. He has like no answer. Mm. Hmm. It's hard to, it's not hard to anti-air DJ, but you do have to be aware of that jump low short. You can't like meet in midair with an air throw very easily because he could, he can do the air short very, very early and has a hitbox as soon as he does it. That was cool. <gasps> Whoa, deep. No enter there. No air legs. Air legs do not exist yet. He got that so, I didn't think he had a juggle there. Yeah, they did it for me. I specifically asked for that. DJ basically never uses Stain Fierce to start combos. He uses Crouch Fierce, which does more damage and also doesn't whiff on standing opponents. And also gives him the ability to charge down while he's doing it. So not having a... It's like, it was. it's as stupid as it is because they never had to fix it because it never caused a problem. Even though it's like a useless normal, his close Fierce. Um, it was like, you know, he had other tools that filled its role. 
so he didn't care that it was useless. Crouch Fierce did everything it needed to do. Crouch Fierce is... I don't know if Crouch Fierce is faster. Sam Fierce is probably faster. DJ's normals are actually moderately quick. Except, like, the far ones. He's, like, fast overall. Some of his normals are pretty slow. Pretty sure his jab is 3 from jab. Pretty sure. I actually don't remember. It might be. DJ might be in the no 3 frame boat. He might be 4 frame everything. EX up kicks is 4 frame, which means it'll beat some but not all safe jumps. What a bad punish. Counter hit punishers would actually be pretty cool in this game. Accidental. He didn't want that fireball. It just didn't matter what he got. There's no human way he planned around having that fireball. He just suddenly got crossed up, changed his direction just a little bit, and got a punch. He was holding down back, and then once Chun-Li went over his head, he went from crouching to standing and hit punch. And when he went to standing, if you're just holding down back and someone jumps over your head and you hit punch as soon as that happens, you didn't change direction, so the game won't give you like a fireball, even though it thinks you went from down back to down forward. That goes with standing too, rather. If you're holding straight back and the opponent jumps over your head and then you just hit punch, it won't think you went from straight back to straight forward even though you did. You have to change directions too. It has to register a new input. So if you go from down back to straight back, which is now straight forward, it thinks you went from down back to straight forward, which gives you a charge, which we just saw for that fireball. It's very easy as DJ to get charge moves on accident because every single possible input he has is a charge move. He's got charge down up kick, charge down up punch, charge back forward punch, charge back forward kick. He has all charge configurations. He even has the delta motion and the double uh, fireball motion, double sonic boom motion. Favorite Street Fighter character as a package? Um, that's a hard question to answer. One of them is probably Vega. One of them is probably Aura. There's a really good answer. Let me think about this, because there's one I love somewhere. Where every part of them is perfect. Oh yes, yeah, Elena Chan. Bring Elena to Street Fighter V. She would actually fit incredibly well. Dude, imagine Street Fighter V Elena. Okay. Limbs, limbs, limbs. Probably something like Chun-Li. Um, no combo from overhead. In fact, the overhead's probably like minus 5 or minus 6. Right? For EX Smell Smash. Um, also minus frame overheads on her normal overheads, but you could space them to be really safe. Um, probably long range lows. Probably shit combos. Because now, like, combos easier. She would probably just have, like, really garbage combo options. Elena would actually fit very nicely. She would be very fair. And they wouldn't have to bring healing back. Because they only need one super. They'd probably give her that um, Street Fighter 4 Omega vacuum shit for one of her V-triggers. And it would work like Shin Ryukin. That'd be kind of fun. Elena with Shin Ryukin. I could uh, Street Fighter Five eyes Elena fairly easily. I could make a fun, balanced character that no one would bitch about very easily using Elena's toolkit. If uh, EX Mount Smash was always unsafe, didn't lead to combos, and um, uh, couldn't be spaced but it was still like 15 frame overhead. People are probably like that. People will probably not complain. Rufus specials are for memeing. Rufus is like the Kareen of Street Fighter 4 in that his special moves are all very gimmicky and only have basically one purpose outside of those gimmicks. So Non-EX Snake Strike basically does nothing. There's a couple juggles where you can use it, like the medium one. But for the most part, it does nothing. Uh, regular Non-EX Messiah Kick is like a joke. It's only like for if you have no meter whatsoever and you like desperately need, if you have like two bars and not three and you desperately need like a light messiah kick follow up, FADC ultra or something, because light messiah kick follow up, any, any messiah kick into light follow up is invincible. It doesn't need to be X. So if you need that mix up, that was a bit strange. That's not near close enough. He can just punish her with ultra. 
I guess what he was trying to do, he didn't recognize the range. He was probably trying to do stand strong into FADC, or stand strong EX Galactic Tornado, FADC, like short round house ultra. That's probably the combo he's going to go for. And that combo would have killed. It would have cost three bars, but it would have killed. But he could have just done round ultra. What else does Rufus even have? Galactic Tornado is safe. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually a good special move. It's not super fast, but it's fast enough that you can, like, true block string, I think, from um, certain normals. You can even end combos with the X1. That's That, like, almost doesn't matter. Sucker is really good at making you die to chip. Rufus needs to play, like, perfect. He needs to, like, get... He needs to time his EX Messiah kick alongside, yeah, her chipping him out. That was a good play from the soccer to do nothing. Healing on a V-Trigger would be awful. I deliberately didn't say that because it would be the absolute worst way to do it. Because you get V-Trigger meter from taking damage. It's the exact same complaint people have with Ultra. Having uh, Ultra on healing. Healing on Ultra. She gets meter for the... She loses health to get meter and then uses meter to get health back. At the end of the day, she's basically playing without an Ultra but with dramatically higher HP. Which a lot of people had beef with. Breaks the rules of the game. It's really not that bad, but the real key, the thing that's actually stupid about it, um, which I didn't see that many people complaining about, but it is broken, is um, uh, she didn't need a setup for healing. It should have been a lot harder to actually get a healing off. Like, she could do healing off of any spin scythe. She could do it off of any throw. She could. She didn't need, like, help landing healing. If she could only do it after certain knockdowns, then it would be fair. I feel like I'm missing a Rufus special. What else does he have? Is it really just Snake Strike, Galactic Tornado, and uh, a Psychic? Is that it? That's, like, a pretty short list. I always felt like it was four. But I can't think of another one. Making stuff safe with meter is kind of cool. You can do that with the V-Trigger install, but that's it. Is that uh, guaranteed? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That might beat... That might trade favorably with the light follow-up. And it should beat the medium one and the... Heavy one. It just beat the medium one right now. I think the medium one is the low. And the overhead one's the high overhead. Who are these characters? Kami is pretty much intact in Street Fighter V. They didn't really change much about her. Of course, she doesn't have V-Trigger anymore. But um, she plays exactly the same game. Dive kicks are already not super easy to do in this game in a way that makes them plus. They are meaty. That's like the one time. Meaty dive kicks are really strong. But like in neutral, they're not amazing. <laughs> Kami. Stand jab is kind of picky. Crouching opponents. Yeah, these are the two most vortex friendly characters. It's like those two plus Akuma. Akuma is more vortexy than Kimi is. Ah. Oh. Nice. Could use a meter. You very rarely see supers, but that's like the one time it's objectively good to go for them. If you're up around, if you have a round on your belt and the super will kill, the super is the correct play. That's like the one time you really need to know your super combos. That was a good time to pull that out. Kami's got to do the first hit of hard into super. First hit of hard tiger or er, drill, cannon drill. Spiral arrow. DP into super is really picky and shitty. Um, and you can do super from other special moves, but you can't combo into other special moves. Kemi was the most slept on character in vanilla. Kami was probably actually top tier in vanilla, but the general consensus was that she was, like, low tier. 
she was buffed quite a lot in Super, I think. And she was also, um, she's gotten her normals buffed a lot since then. They, like, gave her a fucking long list of nice changes to compensate taking away Tiger Knee Cannon Strike. FADC is almost always, I shouldn't say almost always, but FADC has strong offensive and defensive uses. I need to hurry here, Kami. Whoa, that was that would qualify as hurrying. I would not have fucked around with that. It did catch a backdash, and backdash would be the thing to do to bait that. So maybe it was just a kill scenario. Kami can get that close and always DP. Um, backdashes, I already made a whole video on that. Backdash being adjusted to being a defensive option again would be fine. With the backdash video I made, a lot of people didn't get it. A lot of people thought that it, the range was completely ridiculous when I showed off three backdashes. The whole point is that you would go way further than you wanted to. That's like something that a lot of people missed. It was supposed to be too far. Like, you have to give up a shit ton of ground. And if you get hit, you still give up a decent amount of ground. It was me using um, screen position as a resource. That was the idea. It's like you can sacrifice screen position to get out of mix-ups. Or rather, to take a mix-up in a slightly more favorable way. But everyone was like, whoa, that's way too far. It's like, yeah, it is way too far. It would be better if it was less less distance, but I don't want it to be better. I should have made that clear in the video. I want it to be like sacrificing ground on success or failure. So like if you, you know, if it works, you give up like fucking a full screen screen width or like most of a screen width. But if it doesn't work, um um you get hit out of it, you take the damage and whatever, and you still give up like half a screen width because you got flipped out. This is a uh, Zongiton on the left. Zangief is a stupid character in this game, and this is a stupid matchup. Basically, Zangief can use SPD to punish um, dash punches because dash punches are minus two, like always, or worse. One of his dash punches is like minus one, which still gets punished by Zangief Ultra. And every other one of his dash punches is minus two or worse. And uh, SPD is two frames in this game and goes half screen. Light SPD goes really far. So Balrog has to basically play a... What the fuck? Why not Ultra? That was so weird. That must have been a fuck up. There's no human way he did that on purpose. Ultra was a million times better resource to spend there. They would have done about the same damage. He's like already won. Yeah, Stain Fierce is a good button against uh, Geef, but uh, if he jumps as you do Stain Fierce, he can hit you with buttons. You also have to be super smart about your anti airs. No charging. He didn't have a combo. He could have done Bull Headbutt there. Buffalo Headbutt. Oh, the Fate Cross Up. Zingief has two different jump arcs based on whether you do up forward. Or up card into up forward. It sounds really weird, but that's how it works. There's the ultra. That super, he can potentially get a chip out if he builds a meter. <gasps> oh no! Okay. He accidentally went through. That was almost... Like, he, he easily could have gotten bucked for that. Uh, meaty throw is pretty good against Geef. The only thing it doesn't beat is Geef's wake up ultra. That beats all his other reversals, I think. Wait, does it? Does EX green hand, is it throwable? I don't remember if EX green hand is throwable. I feel like it is, but now I'm not sure. I like Balrog when he plays this kind of game. This is when he's a really interesting character to me. It's when he's a tiny... When he's a moving wall. He has to put up a little a little wall of normals that Zingief has to navigate around. But it's still a bad matchup. He probably could have stayed strong that jump. Stand strong is not as good in this game as it is in Street Fighter V. Not even close. Nice punish. Whoa, he's going for the big deal. He went for the easy links, but um, I guess I like—I definitely like the first meter, and I probably like the second. 
he missed the punish by like one frame. Um, I don't think there's any com EX command grabs in this game with their invincibility. Let me think. There might be one. That's like not really a thing. They're hit invincible. For all the 360 grapplers anyway. I think uh, Hakan, but definitely Zangief, um, T Hawk, and Hugo. Nice. And by that I mean fucking Zangief is disgusting. When did he turn into a counterpoke character? The changes to the addition of red focus and the changes to like EX hand are just so nasty. Zangief, be, Zangief is just an EX hand. He's just an ultra and an EX hand. That's all he is. You can't block things and get uh, ultra meter in this game unless they're special moves. He has to take a little bit of damage to get that ultra. It was like actually bad for Balrog that he just gave that ultra to Geef because now any hit is uh, red focus. It's button into EX hand, into red focus, into ultra, and that's going to almost kill Barog. As soon as it happens, it's going to, like, kill him. <gasps> that was it. Geef could just win in any nanosecond. It was terrifying. I hate Geef. Geef in this game is so stupid. Alright, where is it? Just do it. Just do it. Scary. That's a punish, I think. That's a pretty fast ultra. That was, like, not the correct punish to go for, but it was fine. I mean, technically, it's an optimal punish if it's a punish. But, uh, uh, well, no. It was best to just jab. Because you get meter for jabbing, you don't get meter for altering. And he didn't need to do anything fancy to kill there. But he has full meter, so it didn't matter. Basically, anything he did didn't matter there. Able. Able's is. Able's regular command grab is, uh, throw invincible. But his EX command grab is not. That was Crash Fierce. Crash Fierce in this game is like Stand Strong in Street Fighter V, and Stand Strong in this game is like Crash Fierce in Street Fighter V. Is it the real or the fake cross up? Looks like fake. No, it was real. I would have died. They look the damn same. Uh oh. Is he dead? Yup. This might kill. Nasty. Geef is so stupid, dude. Geef is just like a total all or nothing character. It's not even all or nothing because it's not like he spends all that meter. A lot of Geefs just let it rock if they get their EX hand blocked. That's like, okay, punish me, nerd. Don't even spend the bar saving themselves. And you know, Geef has a lot of health. 1100 if I'm not very much mistaken. Nice with punish. Sayonara and be What does that mean? Enbert and belt. And pelt. And pert. Nice with punish. Nice jump. Oh no! Okay. Nice punish too. Ooh, look at these two. It's I.I. Jerry. He's quite a good player. 
He's probably the best Jerry in the lifespan of this game. No cancel. Jerry's a completely different character in this game than five. Not a thing the same. That's the same. That's the only thing that's the same. It's charging and then doing a light fireball is the same. Everything else is different. Her normals are similar-ish. They're like generally similar. She has some close only normals and some far only normals. So like she has no far strong anymore. Her strong is just always close strong. I guess light pinwheel is pretty much light DP. I guess they're pretty much the same move as well. Look at that. You can chain into the overhead. You can also link out of the overhead, which he didn't do, but probably he should have. Wake up Perry. Perry's gone. It was kind of bad. It's like the worst counter move in a game where counter moves are not that good. It just moves her. It doesn't have a hitbox or anything. They salvaged it into her V-Skill, and the V-Skill is much cooler, even though it's not amazing. There's at least a lot of thought behind the design. Fire Roundhouse, I think that's safe in this game. Minus 4 in Street Fighter 5. Close Roundhouse is just her um, back roundhouse in that game. Ooh. Did someone say a grappler with the unhealth? We've actually got one on the screen. Nice. Oh, that was the wrong thing to cancel into. He should have gone into like medium Hyaku Retsu Kyaku. Jerry's um uh Feng Shui engine doesn't consume any ultra meter in this game. To do the chains. So you might as well just do the chains. I mean it still wastes time, but you know. That was all safe. Technically speaking, Jerry could have made it unsafe by backdashing the release of the FADC. But that was risky, because he could have forward dashed. In fact, that's what people do more often. And then if she backdashed, he would have been able to punish her because forward dashes was all faster in almost all instances. Oh yeah, I just remembered that no one likes Seth. People actually hate Seth. Seth is actually unironically one of the most one of the least popular characters in this game. That far strong is a good button. Alright, what's our punish? Meh. Not impressed. He had the down he had the he was sitting on the fireball. He could have done crutch fierce into fireball into low forward into pinwheel. So for anyone who didn't play this game, um all three of Jerry's Fuha Jin's the charges are fireballs. And medium and heavy Fuha Ren Kyaku do not exist. The low fireball is like by far the best one, although honorable mention to the medium one because it um, does a lot of chip and comes out really fast and recovers really fast. And very honorable mention to the high one because it goes up. Jerry's anti normals are pretty good, but using anti normals at all on Seth is kind of iffy because he's got that dive kick. Seth is exactly the entire kind of character that they wanted to neuter in Street Fighter V's various system changes. Ironically, he's not in the game. Nice combo. Two bars to add up some damage. Probably less than 100. Probably over 100. Can he tier this? I think he could have. He chose not to. He probably could have less stronged it for sure. Where are the links? Dropped it twice. Anything that chains into like medium kick can chain into towards medium kick, I think. Or maybe it's only lights chain into towards medium kick. And then um Towards medium kick is plus four, I think. So then she can link like a low short or something like that. It's not even a hard link, it's like two frame. It might be the plus five, might be three frame. Look at that, close fierce. That was weird. I don't remember if that's unthrowable, but even if it is, stay medium kick is also unthrowable and leads to better stuff. Close Fierce is such a weird button. It's still like this in Street Fighter V, but Jerry has two punches and four kicks. Because um, Taekwondo is a 
kick-based martial art. It is a reference to Kim from King of Fighters. Kim has one punch and three kicks. So Jerry has two punches and four kicks. Jerry is a big reference to King of Fighters series. She's got kind of King of Fighters style moves too. Ooh. Her special moves are kind of wacky and setup oriented. Man, Seth is nasty. This doesn't look fun. That command grab does like 140 damage. It's weak as hell. It's like the weakest SPD in the whole series. Those are either... If he does stomps, they're not cross-ups. And if he does the jump medium kick, it is a cross-up. But if the opponent walks out of the corner, the stomps become cross-ups. So, you know, if, they, if the opponent's walking out of the corner, they block them correctly. But the stomps push the opponent back into the corner. It's a very stupid little situation Seth can put you in. It's also very hard to counter hit him. Very hard to interrupt between the stomps. Most characters can't. Maybe like fucking Hakan oiling on the ground. No, not even that would work. Because Seth could like jump off the wall in reaction. Reversal. That's one of the worst reversals in the game, but it's good enough. EX Pinwheel is still one of the worst reversals in Street Fighter V, but it's a lot better than it is in this game. It's really bad in this game. It's very slow. In Street Fighter V, you can low profile it, and if it gets one hit only, the opponent quick stand, can quick stand and punish you. But in this game, like, it takes like an hour to whiff. You can only have ADC like the first hit. It doesn't come out very quickly at all. Um, it doesn't hit properly behind her. It does hit properly above her head, which is kind of cool. It's very unsafe. Very, very unsafe. It actually used to be safer. And they made it worse. They used to kind of push out so it wouldn't always be punishable. And they made it so it pushes out less. So the opponent will always be point blank after blocking the whole thing. Just to make sure that every character can fuck her up if they block it. Which is fair. Can't complain. This um, this was seen to be a matchup in Kemi's favor for a long time. And PR Balog. Uh, I remember him talking about how he had never thought it was that bad. He thought it was fair. That being said, he didn't have a great track record against amazing Kami players. Remember Abigail's story when, um... Who? Um... Jerry thought she was being called flat. I think the story modes are cute. They don't take themselves too seriously. I don't think there's a juggle there. Anti-air level 1 focus attack for Balrog. You need JP1 nor a juggle in a scenario like that, and in order to dash cancel, he needs to sacrifice all charges. And he doesn't have anything meterless that's JP1. In fact, he has basically nothing that's JP1. He's got Ultra 1 and Super. And that's it. Farag has like no JP anywhere, and that's because of Headbutt. You hated his Balrog? Balrog doesn't have a great out for um, the left-right 50-50 that Kimmy can push at some ranges. Like the dive kick versus jump light kick. I guess he can kind of EX dashing blowout. 
but even Kemi can even punish that with um, a spiral arrow if she's on point. Use the armor of the dash punch. Dash punch is her armor on first frame. And Kemi doesn't have like a multi hit dive kick in this game or anything like that. Any multi hit moves in the air. Oh, he missed the headbutt! That's not too bad. It wouldn't have killed Kimmy anyway. Alright. Yep, there's the left right 50 50. Stayed on the front. Empty jump cross up. He had to do that because of the late sand, I think. Um, ooh, there we go. He could have cancelled that button into DP, but it would have taken some insane reactions. Wow, that went really well for Kimmy. Yeah. Son of a barog, dash punching, turn punching. Good anti air. Anti air normals are kind of risky against Kimmy, but you know, there you go. That's exactly why. You do what you gotta do. Nice corner escape. Yix, uh, Bullhead is Balrog's only, like, good, I shouldn't say it's his only good reversal. He's got a lot of reversal options. Yix, Bullhead is the only one that's, like, fully, um, invincible. Headbutt is unthrowable and can be... How does it work? What's the downside with a regular headbutt that Yix... Yix hits lows or something. Yix can't be hit low. That's it. If it's a regular headbutt, then lows will beat it at startup. But EX headbutt is full body invincible, but you can't FADC it, and it costs bar. So, you know, you take your life in your hands every time you do one. Very risky. Uh, EX dash punch is a fine wake up. It's safe on block, and it has first stream armor, but it's throwable because it's armored and not invincible. And also, technically speaking, um, I forget, there's something else that can beat it. I guess armor breaks do. Nice. This will kill. That's some clean charging. Whiffed a special move to get out of the corner, kept down charge. Did the headbutt, kept back charge. And then did the ultra juggle. It's not, none of that was super hard, but it was just good awareness. It was... It demonstrated mastery, you know? Dude has a good handle on his charges. It wasn't something like any player, any Balog of this level should be able to do that kind of shit easily. But it's just showing that he is in fact this level. That breaks armor, but it's too slow. He was trying to catch up backdash or forward dash or something, anything. That wasn't release. Balog's mix-up is very pure, and by that I mean very shitty. He basically doesn't have a mix-up besides his good foot speed and good throw range. <gasps> that was the right option, but he got her midair. That was shitty. Prague's only real mix-up is off of like dash punch follow-ups, and the overheads are reactable. Mm, headbutt's not. Headbutt is a good anti-air, but... You usually want light headbutt, but I guess Kami... <laughs> Kami can bury your timing. And she can get jumps that um, light headbutt would work against, but then other jumps from the same jump height, from the same jump timing and the same light headbutt timing, where she can beat the light headbutt, because dive kicks are stupid. Also, having down charge is annoying. Kemi can jump from ranges where she can stop short and hit Balrog on the front, but if Balrog does any headbutt, then um, he can just go under Kemi clean. Ooh, look at that combo. That only works on some characters. That was really cool. Balrog is a big boy, so it works on him. Kemi has a chip out available. She wants one, but she shouldn't take it. That was a punish. It might have been. I don't even know if it was a punish. He was probably just going to FADC. The thing is, not all the overheads are unsafe. The one you can combo out of is unsafe. But I think the light like overhead is... That beats all focus follow-ups. The light overhead is... um. I think safe against jabs, and he just did one jab into Spiral Arrow. Oh no! Chose not to Ultra. I respect that decision. That is safe. Balrog has to frame trap, and frame trapping is annoying for him because he has to sacrifice charge to walk. 
And if he doesn't walk, then people don't take throws in this game. There's more frame advantage, so people like... I don't know. There's more frame advantage and more push-out, I think. So people walk more during their block strings. If you do, like, low jab into... Like... I don't know. Maybe it's two low jabs. If you do two low jabs, it's Balrog. And you don't have a little bit of walking afterwards. Then no human is going to take a throw. And if no one takes a throw, then low jab, low jab, low strong is not going to do anything. A lot of characters, a lot of people do like jab, jab, walk in just a little bit, and then immediately go for more buttons. That still works in Street Fighter V. I certainly do that a lot. Low strong, walk in, low strong as Akuma. Gets me decent success, anyway. This is a fun time to spend Ultra. You're not realistically going to land Ultra Grounded on most characters, including Kenny. Even if you try and punish a focus attack with it, she can just backdash and then it hits her midair. Oh no! He went the wrong way! Kenny stayed in the front the whole time, but I guess there was like a couple frames where she crossed him up, and then he recrossed. This is not soggy time. Stuff going there! Now I got out of my system. Super Uri Ah Tsu Ue. Ue Matsu is the last name. Oh, it's Uri Matsu. I don't know what the hell Uri Matsu means. Uri Tsu. I just misread it twice. I think I got it right the first time. I don't know what the hell that means. It could be a small two. He looks kind of full size. Look at the zoning. Jury actually has like top five keep away in this game. Maybe not top five. Top five is pretty strong. But especially in certain matchups, Jury is an extremely difficult to approach character. Yo, that chip looks hella nice. Did you know that Doritos don't actually need to have dust? Like, at all? They can make Doritos with identical flavor without dust. And they just choose not to because dust is part of the Dorito experience. Yeah, Jury versus Geef is one of those matchups where, like, you probably technically win. I don't know if Jury wins. But you have to play perfect. You can't, you can't fuck up, because if you fuck up, you lose instantly. The most fun character to watch in SF4. I feel like I have a really strong opinion about that, but I forget who my favorites were. I've always liked watching Guy when it was like Mark Teddy or fucking, you know, one of them. I'd always get hype. Yeah, see, that, that move isn't very good at hitting behind her. I feel like it had uh, like a hit that hit behind her and they removed it at some point. Fun fact, Rufus's Ultra 1 still has a hit that hits behind him like most of the way through. It's pretty funny. This is a damn stressful matchup. Geef can approach faster than Jerry can keep him out. They have to be really careful about minus frames in this game because Geef exists. And Geef has a half screen uh, two frame punish. So they didn't really want to... They had to be really careful about making things minus two or worse. Unless they wanted Geese to be able to throw them. And they were clearly okay with that with some things. They were clearly okay with Geef being able to throw... Um, the guy's shoulders. They clearly did not intend to fix that. Because they never fixed it. They, know, they could have made it minus one at any point, and they were just like, nope. It's minus two, and it's staying. Screen positioning is extremely important in this matchup. So watch that entire match, and then watch that one moment. There you go. Geef is really stupid. 
I don't even think he's like top tier, although he probably actually is like higher top tier. But like he's just so stupid. He's just bullet the character. Like no, cr no crush counter is as stupid as Geef is. At least Geef's is hyper hyper resource intensive, and he's not super scary. Besides that, he's like actually fairly easy to zone. In this game, compared to Street Fighter Five, he's quite hard to zone in Street Fighter Five because zoning tools got worse, but his approach didn't really get worse. If anything, his approach got better because of V-Skill. That was probably a... He probably could have punished there with, like, Far Stand Strong or something. Honestly, low forward probably could have punished and he missed the window. This game does not have the input leniency, so it does not have input leniency on punishes. I have mixed opinions on input leniency. I mostly really like it. But input leniency on punishes is so fucking nice. If something's minus three and you have a three frame button, it's actually like a three frame window to punish instead of a one frame window to punish. It's dumb as fuck that it's a one frame window to punish in this game. Balrog doing minus three dash punches and Kami needs to do fucking a perfect frame stand jab and then it instantly cancel into hard spiral arrow, which is a very unsafe attack. That's her only way to punish them. She can either do jab by itself, which does very little damage. She can do jab into hard spiral arrow, which is a one frame window into a very unsafe move that has no confirm. Or she can let dash punches rock and then let Balrog fucking do a shit ton of chip damage to her. Stupid. Stupid scenarios like that. Risk reward is all fucked up in this game. The way that ultras work, that every ultra has a shit ton of invincibility, and the way that a lot of combos are built around grounded, tight, tight grounded links is just very, very stupid. I like this game a lot, don't get me wrong, but that's like, I can't believe those two mechanics together. I talked about this last time I streamed this game. It depends. It depends on what your character had. Even like a silver, silver, even like a 2000 PP player um, could do like a, like a reversal DP if they were like Ryu or Ken. Reversal DP is not that hard. And that, uh, that's three frame. Certain characters have a much easier time than others with tight punishes. It's really easy to do a reversal SPD. Anyone can do that. Fucking 1,000 point players can do that. Geef is really, really stupid at low level. Yeah, Jerry had a Jerry had a three frame DP, I think. Light DP, pretty sure it was three. Her super was three as well, I think. She also had a three frame jab, so she didn't get any new, new punishes or anything. It just made some. It made certain punishes more consistent. Did I say Elena? I feel like I said Jerry, but I was thinking about Elena. Elena had a three frame DP. Um, we're catching up on Evo Japan. See, for might have been four frame. Do you think? Oh, do you learn more on shorter, harder to hit combos with higher damage normals to compensate, or longer but easier with weaker normals? Huh? I need to understand this sentence. Do you learn more? What do you define learn more? Are you asking me which one... Are you asking me lean more? Are you asking me which one I prefer? Oh, lean more. Okay, I get it. I understand now. Um, I like long combos. And I like easy combos. So completely door number two. I don't need combos to be long. I just want like th four actions with a little bit of variance. I like hard, I like easy combos but with the possibility for hard combos. I want the hard combos to only be somewhat better than the easy combos, although noticeably harder. Marvel's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. 
Marvel has long easy combos, and there's the possibility for hard combos if you want to do them, and they're only somewhat better. Yeah, that's basically the way this game goes, for the most part. Most characters have two and three frame links in almost every instance that they can go for that lose damage. There's almost no mandatory one frame links. I bring that up, and the only one I can think of is always able step kick into follow ups. Step kick into follow ups is a uh, one frame no matter which combo route you go. You've got to do a one frame link to combo out of that, and it is very, very important to be able to do. So if you want to play able, you have to fucking learn that one frame link. One frame links aren't that hard. Or rather, they're hard as fuck, but if you plank, you can be consistent. Cars can be consistent if you do them enough, and two frame links can be consistent if you do them enough. And doing plinks makes all one frame links into two frame links, as long as you can hit the car. Rufus stand like kicking to stay in hard punch. He had um medium punch as well that he could do there. That actually still worked, and that was one frame faster, I think. I think hard punch worked from further away too. I don't think you could do two light kicks into a medium punch, but you could do two light kicks into a hard punch. Maybe I'm misremembering and Rufus medium punch and hard punch with the same speed. I feel like medium punch was faster. In most instances where Rufus can do light punch or light kick hard punch, he could actually do light kick hard kick. Like you can do two light kicks into a hard kick TC. Um, this is it's just always the same DJ. Like where's the increase? It's Kita Senju. Kita Senju is extremely prolific, especially in this era of the game's life. He does well at tournaments. It's like top eights with DJs. Surprise, it's Kita Senju. There are more DJs than there used to be. It's because the game isn't being played for money anymore. When people play for money, oh, did he get him? Oh, he got him. Caught that back dash. That would have caught a lot of stuff. It just wouldn't have caught blocking. Um, when people when people play for money, they have to have a character that like you know has a future. But like people don't care about a character with a future when they're playing for fun. They play a character based on how fun the character is, and admittedly, DJ is kind of fun. That might have been a punish. I don't know what Crash Fierce is on hit. That's like such a weird thing. Sucker plays like always cancel Crutch Fierce. He tried for it as an anti-air, but DJ actually landed because DJ has that short jump. So it hit him on the ground and then he did a punish. Well, it might have been a punish. I don't know. It wasn't that unsafe. Nice. Got a link. That's a 50 50. It's a little seeable, but it's not super seeable. That was a failed blink. He went for uh, staying strong, but he. Got the stand jab because he was blinking strong at the jab. Good spacing. There's a certain range DJ can jump from where he'll get either um, jump down light kick is a non cross up or jump medium kick is a cross up. And DJ players like to jump from that range. You, you can spot it. He has to do the jump down light kick really early, but it's hard to spot. Mm, jump back fierce. That's a non charge anti air. DJ's anti airs are extremely shitty. Stand strong is like the one they want him to use, and it's fucking trash. It like never works. Um, if you have down charge, uh, up kicks are an extremely consistent anti air. If you don't have charge, DJ doesn't have a good anti air. Crouch hard punch, minus five on hit. I think he punished with low short, which is either four or five. I don't remember which it is. I think it's four. DJ is bad. DJ is like one of the only characters in this game who never succeeded. He had like no success whatsoever. But also, he's not very popular at all. So, characters that aren't played won't win. Um, I made an entire video um, about how bad DJ is, if someone wants to post that. The video is called uh, DJ's Trash. So you can probably find it very easily by searching that. And then you can come back here and post all the memes.
Basically, anything you want to work for DJ, like, it doesn't work. That was nice. I, for a second, I thought that wasn't going to chip out. I felt my breath catch there. I was like, shit. Did he just kill himself? It's stand hard punch, close hard punch specifically. And it also doesn't whiff on every crouching opponent, but it does whiff on, I think, most of them. I think that one was patched too. I think that one was patched in 1.04. Oh, look at that normal. D DJ neutral jump hard punch causes a ground slam. It looks really funny. Nice links. DJ was one of the big reasons that 1.04 even happened. It was mostly the DLC characters. It was people bitching about um, Elena's hurt boxes. That's basically why 1.04 happened. It was because people thought that Elena was stupid. No, there was like um, there was someone else who was even dumber. Who was it? I feel like it wasn't Poison. It definitely wasn't DiCaprio. It wasn't Hugo. Who am I forgetting? I, it was partially Elena. It was Relento? No. That's all of them. That's all five. I guess it was Elena. 1.04 is like very easy to forget about. I forgot about it for like a year. Yeah, people bitched about that. That was one of the main reasons. It was like Elena's skeleton... Um, it was the five. Oh, it was Hugo. It was Hugo. It was Hugo. It was Hugo being shit. I was thinking of characters who were good. One of the reasons 1.04 happened was because Hugo was too trash. Got it. Looks good. He was trying to. It looked weird that he was just walking back, but what he was actually doing there was trying to bait a DP. I know that sounds really stupid. But the thing is, DJ at any point there, he could have done um, Sobot. Like an EX Sobot. And uh, Sakurai couldn't react to it. So she had to just do a raw EX DP and pray. So he was just watching for that. But if she EX DP'd as he did a Sobot, she could, you know, fuck him up. Hugo was like, uh, it was like that one video basically got the game a patch. Was a Hugo player getting monstered by a sim. I forget the two players. I think one of them might have been YHC Mochi or something. Actually, that might have been even before that. Hugo's poor balance was like a big problem, though. People bitched about. It wasn't all sim range normals, it was just um it was just a medium kick. But that was really dumb. Is this DJ Trash? Yep. It's the mobile version of YouTube. That's a good video. Everyone who hasn't seen it, watch it. It's one of the more important videos I've ever made. I can tell because it has lots of views. Why did that fucking Chun Li video I made just recently get twenty four thousand views? What happened? Why'd that get shared so much? I thought I found something really cool, and I just found something like a little bit cool. Hugo got, in 1.04, Hugo got the claps that could destroy fireballs and still hit the opponent, which was actually a pretty nice buff. Clapping fireballs got dramatically easier. It was like really shitty before 1.04, and now it's something you can actually do, and it's not bad. For some reason, I feel like I've never seen a soccer player combo two stain shorts. That looked really strange to me. Remember when overheads were safe? What we got? Oh yeah, I remember that. The thing is, like, when did when has Bonchan ever had to play a good Hugo in his life? Japanese people are just as vulnerable to the, like, poor matchup exposure. There's a lot of videos of US players beating Japanese pros where it's just the US player playing a fucking an unheard of character. Remember back when Marm was, like, the only Dudley player and he beat, uh, he beat, uh, Golden Age Daigo? Remember Marm versus Daigo? 
I don't know why they nerfed Everheads as much as they did. Everheads already don't lead to combos. And they already have really piss poor start up. Just make them safe. Just make them like minus two and then on hit make them like neutral. There, done. I fixed Everheads. Hell, make them plus one. Once he got the top 8, Luffy had a pretty good bracket. Because Luffy got matched against like Sagat, who he had a lot of experience against, and Fei Long, who he had a lot of experience against. And then there was some other matchup. Hugo? I mean, not Hugo. Zingief? I don't remember who the other person was. But it was like a good matchup for Rose. Remember fucking Evo 2008 or whatever? When Justin Wong pulled out like a fucking, like a Fei Long. And like a... Evo 2009, I think. Justin Wong pulled out a... a like Fei Long and I forget the other guy, Kami or something. Because Daigo had only had experience against the arcade characters and never played the, arc, the console version that much. And there was a little period where the um, console characters weren't in arcades yet. Yeah, Balrog. It was Balrog and Balrog. It was Balrog at Evo, and then there was a time that either that Evo or a little bit after that, he pulled out like Rose and Faye or something. He pulled out two like console characters. Daigo still won. Daigo versus Justin. I can only remember they've played like like they must have played like ten times in tournament over the entire lifespan of this game, and I can only remember Justin Wong winning once. It was during the Japan versus World five v five. I don't remember the event. And it was a first to one, so, you know. But Justin Wong managed to clutch it out. That was a pretty all-star set. We might watch that one. That was the one where Chocoblanca went 0 and 5. RIP. I think that's good. Yup. That probably wouldn't have worked prior to Ultra. But Ultra buffed the... Uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4 buffed Balog's Ultra 1 for exactly that scenario. Topanga leagues were excellent. Those are like the first of seven ones, right? That shit was top notch. I think my favorite was the Canada Cup Master Series. Or Capcom Cup. Capcom Cup, both of those were like amazing. Was it two in this game or was it one? I feel like it was two. Ah oh, yeah, look at that. Gimmicked. Wake Up Stand Fierce is already gimmicky as hell. Close Fierce. And then the cancel always comes out really late for that button. I think it's unsafe on block, but if she does EX Pinwheel, it catches them when they would be punishing. The invitationals are some hype shit. There should be more invitationals. Oh no. Balog socks. Four dash is covered by this fireball, yeah. And four dash is really good in this ism. What if the reset got lit up? She still builds ultra meter while she's um in Feng Shui engine. I think that's kinda cool, and I wish it was like that for No yeah, I wish it was like that for Street Fighter Five. I wish like install ultras I mean install triggers. You still built new V meter beneath the trigger. Especially with the new prevalence of, like, there's a lot of characters with install two bars. There weren't that many install two bars. And a lot of the install two bars disappear really quickly. Like uh, Shinryuken and shit. 
That's an install. That's a two bar. That goes pretty quick. Shinrikan would be like ten times better if he could still build V meter while the while the while the bar was sticking down. Like imagine if your your meter ended, your trigger ended, and then fucking it showed your regular V bar again and you already had like fucking most of a most of a V bar again. That'd be kinda nice. I do like preventing you from using V reversals while you're in V trigger though. Set play Kana. You could duck that until Ultra. That EX Fireball. Oh, Sakura! Okay, she didn't get punished. If you got the first rep only, um, they can fall out. Sakura is. Sakura is not too bad, from what I can tell, in Street Fighter V. She's okay. She's not the worst character in the game. But, um. I really feel like uh, the ability to cancel into um, V Trigger from special moves would be fucking everything she ever wanted. Oh no! He had to do something wild. He had to kill before the time ran out. Sakura's mix up is very frame tap oriented, so it's hard to get it going quickly when the opponent's just going to be holding down back. She also has an overhead, I suppose. He could have gone for two overheads. That kind of shit is not that bad when there's only a few seconds left on the clock because people play really stupid when there's only a few seconds left. Risk reward changes a lot when there's only a few seconds left. Sakura is like... I can see why people would think Sakura is awful. I don't think she's that bad. But I think that the things that Sakura is actually really good at are like um, not so obvious. The thing about Sakura is that in Street Fighter V, one of her best features is her fireball. It's very easy to space it so it's safe, and it'll still catch jump out at those ranges where it's safe. Like, there's attack sequences where the... Like, uh, low jab, stand strong, or stand jab, stand strong, low forward fireball. You can't jump out of the fireball, but it's minus one on block. And you can also charge the fireball if you choose to. Ch charging it makes it a lot more vulnerable to jumping. But, you know. Leads to a beast go on hit block, or just some damage. And plus frames. Um, but more importantly, far away, the fireball is basically free to charge. And getting the fireball up is very, very similar to getting up a Guile V-Skill. Charges about the same speed, and then you can follow it in at about the same success rate. The far Fierce Cancel, that's your strongest cancelable normal. Pretty much everything does like 80 damage for soccer, I think, or 90. But Far Fierce is like 100. I think Sakura is like someone's Sakura in Street Fighter Five is gonna be like the she's gonna be like the Fei Long of Street Fighter Two. Like she technically has all the all the tools to be like a to have like like success as a character, but they're not like she's not as good. I feel like she's not as good a character as like a lot of the existing like high and top tiers. So like it's gonna take a little while for someone to care enough. And to do well enough to like figure enough out that she can sneak her way in. It's like if there's like um like the top hundred players in like twenty fucking twenty. I can see they'd be in like some soccerers. That's basically how it already is. I'm sure there's a master soccer out there somewhere. There's definitely plenty of diamond soccerers already playing at a diamond level with Sakura. Definitely possible. She is very vanilla. Less rushdown is questionable. It's more like everyone plays the game she used to play. And she 
she plays a more uh a more a more uh sterile version of it. Sakura has been sterilized. I can see that. She's very, very basic. But she's a Shoto. She's like more traditional Shoto than she used to be. She got better at the Shoto things. She used to be good at stuff and then capable of Shoto stuff. You know what I mean? Like the stuff she was good at wasn't Shoto stuff. But she could do the Shoto stuff. But now there's actual... Like that. Now she can do that pretty well. Like any tier light DPs. She can technically do it in this game. But now it's actually upper body invincible for the light one. In Street Fighter Five. Yeah. Gimmicky. Got punished. It's gonna, huh? Where's the FADC? What the fuck? Okay. He had a guaranteed kill combo and he didn't do it. Whoa. What happened? What's going on? Was that the end of the video? Sakura beating Jerry with Grand Finals? Damn it. It just ended. So Kai, Sakura won the event. That's why they're all flipping out. Sakura like feels very shadowy now. The Far Fierce feels a little bit like Ken. The anti-air crutch fierce is something she's basically always had. Um the Tatsus still feel like ta Sakura, but they're slower, so you can't just do them willy nilly. She feels like Street Fighter Five. Dude, that was definitely don't take that anywhere seriously. There was a forehead in it. Don't you know? Alright, I know you guys love this shit. Oh, who are these two? This is uh, top four. This is all I could find for Third Strike. I could probably go to Game Newton and find the rest of it. I'll probably do that at some point in the future. But I just don't feel like watching the whole thing right now. One guy makes a move that isn't... That is EX, but isn't really a reversal. Yeah. I feel like there might be more than just that. If that's your category. The invincible EX moves that are not reversals. Uh yeah, this no, it's not Tominaga. Well, I've got these two characters. Someone translate these two characters. It is Tominaga. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's written on the bottom. Yep, confirm Tominaga. Chaco Yurian. I know this guy. I've seen Chaco Yurian. This is a bad spot. This is winnable, but it's shitty. There you go. Look at that. Neutral Jump Strong. The top secret Yurian tech that Yurian players don't want you to know about. I thought this was the bottom of the video, this line. Uh, he gets everything. He can kill. No, he can't kill. Urian's got a long dizzy bar. You can't dizzy Urian him. No, you can dizzy Urian once on combo. You just gotta do something different. One of the special moves is in a regular version. There's like a Urian only juggle that touches stuns. That looked like a regular ass combo. It must be a different version of Fugiage or something that does more stun. If I recall correctly, the double Fukiyage uses two light Fukiyages. So if you can swap one of them for a medium or heavy Fukiyage, you probably get extra damage and stun, I guess. Sakura's story was great, what? Sakura was fucking hilarious. That was one of the better stories in the game. And most of the stories are pretty funny. Put a baby in me. That's Sakura's story. Sakura's story is I want to get fucked in the ass by Ryu. 
Ryusan. Sakura is cute. I like how they actually developed her character. They literally gave an interview like a few years ago that was like, if Sakura ever comes back, um, she will still be a schoolgirl. She will never not be a schoolgirl. But they actually advanced her character. Ryu is, um, Ryu is presumably somewhere in his 20s. Ryu is not that much older than Sakura. In the alpha games, Ryu is like very, very young 20s. And Sakura is 18. Ryu is at most like 6 years older than Sakura. Ryu and Ken and Alpha series are both young as hell. Ah, hello. I would have already told you that you were new here because I don't recognize your name. Look at that. He missed the juggle. Depend that juggle can be different difficulties based on how far Yurian is into the mirror. It can hit once or twice. Or like several times, I guess. Look at that. Punish that throw whiff because he jumped super early. Time stopped passing in the Street Fighter universe. The USSR still exists in the Street Fighter universe. Fucking 1991 or whatever hasn't happened yet. Even though Sea Viper has a cell phone. Even though Elena has a cell phone. Time passed r normally in the Street Fighter verse until like Street Fighter 3, and then time stopped passing. Yeah, ignore all the dates from the Street Fighter 2 series games. I meant discounting integrals. Since um, Street Fighter 5 and Street Fighter 4 are both integrals. Reminder that Chun-Li is a Christmas cake. Uh, I beat Shell and Monks. It got beaten by me. I can beat that game in one sitting pretty easily. It took about three hours. I didn't do any of the bonus content, like secret bosses and stuff. Theoretically, the character in Street Fighter 2010 is, in fact, Ken Masters, I guess, technically. I have a very important question for everyone. Why isn't Final Fight called Street Fighter, and why isn't Street Fighter called Final Fight? Aw, oh, fuck Night in the Woods. My next game is probably actually fucking the N64 version of uh, Toy Story 2, which is a surprisingly okay game. You know what I really want for Sean? If they add Sean. One, I want them to add Sean. And for Sean Super, um... I want Sean Super to be uh uh I want it to have like a four second or like a five second super freeze. I want it to be a really long super freeze. Like picture Ultra One Super Freeze from Street Fighter um Street Fighter Four. Evil Ryu, Super Freeze. Evil Ryu Ultra One Freeze from Street Fighter Four. You know how he like fucking rages at the sky and then puts his hands up and starts charging? 
and then it zooms out again. I want that, but like two seconds longer, like three seconds longer than even that. And then when he throws the fireball, I want it to be like instant. I want it to be no animation, just one hit, just pow. So all of the fucking duration is like the freeze. And then once the actual fireball gets launched, just like... Just one big pop. Sean's V-Skill will almost definitely involve throwing basketballs. Very, very likely. Oh yeah. You can tell we're at finals of a fucking Japanese third strike event. Because there are two Chun-Li's and I'm not having fun. One Chun-Li makes, already makes fucking the game half as good as it normally is. Two Chun-Li's removes the other half of the goodness. Chun Chun is kind of technical, but it's not fun. Optimal Oki knockdown. Kevin. Only if they renamed him, because he was Ken back then. I wonder if they've got a CFN page for that guy. I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Kevin Stryker, Ken Masters. Yup, there you go. Japanese name. I guess the game had nothing, probably, probably nothing to do with Street Fighter in the Japanese title. Or was it still Street Fighter 2010 in Japan? Kevin Ryan? Garo? Kushnud, but Ryu's not even bad anymore. Get out. Ryu's a good character. Who was the interview? Was it Daigo? Someone gave an interview on Ryu's tier, and it was it was like a Japanese player, and they were like, um, Ryu at his peak. Ryu at his peak is like maybe top ten. Ryu played perfectly as top ten. It was like something like that. I've never played Waku Waku 7. Ryu's VT2 is kind of bad, but the VT1 got buffed, so it's okay. Ryu's V-Triggers are pretty weak in general, though. Neither one is that good. But his neutral's okay. Claw like arguably got nerfed in Street Fighter V AE. I've actually been seeing some really cool pressure with Urian's VT2. Is it actually bad? I haven't really like messed around with it yet myself, but I've been seeing people doing like charge VT2 guard break combos into like super and um, VT2 like juggles into VT2 juggle into. I saw one person. I saw a combo I thought was so cool. It was like um it was like VT2 into like headbutt into like tackle or something like that. Laura's resets actually got buffed when they were one of the grotier parts of her. They removed most grody parts of characters, but they actually made Laura grotier. Laura caught some nerfs too, though. She's not like way better, but she's probably 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 slightly better than she used to be. Team locked into one character, but they all have to use different supers. I don't know. Yeah, I believe reuse tournament viable. Absolutely, not even a question. Ryu is absolutely okay. I mean, like, you should still probably play Akuma instead of Ryu. If you can play Ryu, you could be a good Akuma player. 
but like Ryu is okay. Ryu already, even when Ryu was like the low point, even when Ryu, like season two Ryu or whatever, post nerf Ryu, um, Ryu still has like net five fives. He's like mostly five fives. He's just lackluster. He has like very few gimmicks, and he's um, he like never has like advantage tiers, advantage matchups. But he's still like mostly fair. He does okay in almost every matchup. He like doesn't have a matchup worse than like six four. I don't think. And that was when Ryu sucked. Now Ryu's a bit better. Honestly, I wouldn't be su if someone told me that Ryu had flat five fives and they were like a pro Ryu player. I wouldn't be surprised. Ryu's fine. Akuma has like no map matchups at all. He has like maybe two, at most. A lot of people said Zangief, which I can maybe agree with. Uh, I heard Guile a couple times, and that was it. And honestly, I played a lot of Akuma versus Guile, and it's like probably 5-5. Five five. And I played Akuma versus Geef, and it's also maybe 5-5. Five five. In order to win Evo, Tokido had to go through Itazan. In Street Fighter V, very rarely. Slam. Realistically speaking. There are like almost no 7-3s at all. And the ones that do exist are on grapplers, if there are any still. I mean, does a lot of damage to Akuma, but I don't think it's a bad matchup. But now it might be. The thing about Akuma is that against Abigail, he can actually V... He can V-Skill to shut down um, his uh, Abigail's VT1. And he can also... Um, teleport out of VT2. He can like teleport behind Abigail if he sees him start charging. So technically speaking, Akuma has hard counters to Abigail's um, triggers, which is kind of neat. That being said, if you V-Skill a hard punch, uh, you have a fuck ton of white health. And you better do like a nice long combo to get it back. Yeah, you definitely can't make mistakes, and you can't EXDP like ever. Abigail, or Dictator versus Monot sounds kind of bad. Why am I watching this? Minot is actually probably like top five. If not like, I wouldn't be surprised if like four years down the line, if they didn't change the game at all, Minot was top one. But she's probably top five. The thing about Ryu is that like there were no play, there are no Ryu players. That's not a thing about Ryu being shit tier. That's a thing about Akuma existing. Ryu is redundant. There's a character who basically has the entire entirety of Ryu's toolset inside his toolset. And is like marginally better. If there were Ryu players, there would be Ryu's winning events. But there are no Ryu players. It's not like Ryu players don't exist because he can't win. Ryu players don't exist because no one has any faith in him. It's like, yeah, it's like the same thing as Street Fighter 4. Evil Ryu exists, so don't play Ryu. If you want to make Ryu work, you can make Ryu work. You can absolutely play Ryu at like a diamond level.
highest potential. I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> That's a bit strong. Reese Perry's not all that. It's not like you can just give your perfect parry everything. Reese Perry has outright weaknesses. It does shut down some moves, and it does let you make hard reads, I guess. The thing about, like, his parry doesn't always give you punishes. It's not like parry equals punish for you. Like they'd strike often is. If Ryu had like Akuma's back medium, if Ryu had Akuma's medium kick as back medium kick, I would probably play Ryu. It wouldn't take much. If Ryu could do regular fireball into V trigger, I'd probably play Ryu. Akuma just has some things that are just so nice. Akuma has more quality of life. Akuma is a different balancing philosophy than Ryu. I feel like if they made Ryu today, they would make a different character than what they made in uh, 2015 or whatever, 2016, whenever they started working on Ryu. I feel that about like about half the cast, half the vanilla cast, maybe more. The DLC characters just feel so different from the non-DLC characters. Nash was deserving. Nash was okay in season two. He was like bad, I guess. Nash was probably bad. I didn't see anyone really fucking. I don't know. Nash is weird. Nash is very matchup based. Nash has like actual advantage matchups, even though he sucked. I would have given Nash exactly his season one to season two nerfs, but I would have made some other part of him better to compensate, and they didn't do that. If it was me, I would have given Nash two uses of his V-Trigger. The thing is, that would have even been a good solution. Nash's V-Trigger is kind of silly. It's like really, really good against some characters and not very good at all against others. It's always nice as a combo extension. Abigail's the best grappler right now, probably. Oh no, it ended.